Okay. Welcome to Meet Me for Coffee. Uh, today I'm featuring a guest, John Engbeck. He actually has a PhD. So I'm going to let John introduce himself and what it is he does and his views on personal and what was the other one? World transformation. So go ahead, John. Share me oh. a little bit of your story about personal and world transformation, and then we'll muse about some other things. Well, sure. Um, thank you. So, um, let's see, I got the PhD in criminology um, later in my life. It wasn't until 2010, so I was 50 or so. Um, and, uh, but I spent, you know, I've had a life, a career of law enforcement, security, uh, special agency. And so, uh, but I've also had a, a life of pain. So, uh, somewhere along the way there, it became necessary to, to figure out how to relieve suffering. And so <clears throat> that tied into criminology and it all became a big, you know, a wonderful panorama of learning. <clears throat> uh, and which brings me to the point of um, personal transformation and world transformation as one. So I think after we get some level of enlightenment, we begin to view the world as a macrocosm of the self, as a microcosm. And so purification, um, all the things we find on the, on, the, on the way to the top of the spine bone, um, which is known as the atlas, um, <clears throat> which is a, is a fictional character who holds up the planet, I guess. The god atlas. I wouldn't say he's fictional. <laughs> you wouldn't? No. Yeah, so, um, <clears throat> yeah, so... Uh, my, my, my process has been one to come through a lot of pain. I mean, I've had pain throughout my body. I uh, was an athlete until I was 41. I'm still an athlete, but, you know, professionally and uh, did a lot of training. So, you know, we used steroids. You have to now as a professional um, and growth hormones and all kinds of uh, <clears throat> substances to enhance our performance. And so at the end of that, I had nothing but pain. Um, you know, you can imagine I was cycling 700 on the bench press, which is way too much for, I'm only 5'9". You know, guys 6'5 can't do that. So just, you know, overdid it. So, and I think you can, you know, you can parallel that to anybody who's overdoing it and, and my overdoing it, you know, in other ways as well. So to find a balance um, is the key, it appears. Absolutely. You also, I mean, I'm sure you know, know this already, you know, pain in the body is integrated within the root center and being grounded in the body. You know that, right? I, yeah. Are you aware? I think so. <laughs> so I just, um, so yeah, so pain just resonates in the lower frequencies of the body to kind of wake you up to what obviously needs to shift. That's just my perspective when I hear people talk about pain, physical pain especially. So to, it sounds like you've done some shamanic journeying as well to work, work through this. Oh, absolutely. Yes. I had a lot of training, um, primarily uh, Cindy Dale's training recently for the past, you know, five or 10 years. <clears throat> but prior to that, uh, Melchizedek training. And then what I very much like her, uh, I have a very broad, uh, you know, uh, base of uh, tools that I use shamanically, energetically. <clears throat> So can you share what those are? Well, um, you know, it's, you know, basically it's about going into the inner world, the, the microcosm, if you will, for me, um, and discovering what's going on in there. So we like to diminutize. I don't say shrink because um, that has other, you know, that has other connotations. But diminutize ourselves to the nanoscopic level and go in. In my case, I'm a SWAT instructor. So in my case, when we go shamanically, it's SWAT team. Uh, but that doesn't mean that we're violent. We're actually really good at peace. Um, but we go through the body, go through a chakra, go through a tube, go through a portal, go through a bone, go through any part of the body. Um, very interesting to go through the gut. Um, lots, of, lots of trauma there usually. Um, but, and so I do that daily for myself, um, ongoing, uh, you know, clearing, purifying, learning. You know, so and that's also the access pass to, to past lives and early life trauma, et cetera. 
So when you say the gut, are you talking about going through the solar plexus or the Ming Man? Like what doorway are you going through, I guess? Um, well, so um, I usually will enter the chakras, but I, you know, enter the body anywhere. At that, when we're that small, we can enter the body anywhere and as an energy. Um, but uh, in the gut, I'm referring to going through those tubes. You know, those are actual physical tubes. And there are typically lots of resistance there, um, which that's what we specialize in. We're Marines, you know, we're SWAT team. So when there's resistance, it kind of draws us. Absolutely. Um, you know, and then everybody needs and wants to get into the heart, but it's the toughest one. Some people are, oh, no, I wouldn't go there. Um, but, of course, that's, uh, there's many an adventure to be had in the heart. So, so your Ph.D. is in criminal is that where your PhD is? Yes, I know crime. <laughs> <laughs> You're very aware of crime. Well, my great uncle was uh, uh, Judge Roy Bean, and that's what he said. Ask not my knowledge of crime, I know crime, for I've lived my life in total disregard of the law. But <clears throat> um, yeah, it's criminology, so um, studying the theories. It's basically criminology is basically sociology with the deviant psychology right. angle to it. Absolutely. So what's What's your, I got to hear your opinion on this Beowulf syndrome. Right. Okay. So do you, the story of Beowulf, as I understand it, we saw Angelina Jolie play uh, the demon in the last version, uh, which came out just a few years ago. Um, and so what, what happens is whoever the great knight is who goes out to repel the dragon demon that's haunting the castle or the village, <clears throat> Um, falls for her. So and that's how that works. And then he comes back and tells everybody that he defeated her. And so what that just represents to me is as we grow in ability, capability, power, <clears throat> we get temptations. And they may take any kind of form. So uh, especially, especially as men and bravado, you know, uh, prestige, et cetera. So there's ego, then the fall, you know, to spiritual ego. Right, right, right. Yeah. So are you, you're saying that this Beowulf, Beowulf syndrome actually circles back. Like you believe you've got rid of the shadow or this dark energy, but yet it will circle back and surface in some other different kind of dialogue or a way? Well, in the story, what happens is he doesn't get rid of her. He kills her son, which is the son, her prodigy with the last king. He's the new king. And he's assuming his power as king. In so doing, he has to be the hero. So he repels the demon. Well, she's very seductive and beautiful. So he doesn't repel her. Um, in fact, oh, there goes one. Uh, and so, um, yeah, so uh, in fact, he, you know, he sleeps with her and they have another prodigy. So, um, <clears throat> and this is the fall. So, you know, uh, you know, once we accelerate a little bit, there's all kinds of temptation because we have new capabilities and so forth. And they may be very subtle or they may be very, you know, obvious. But that's what it represents to me is uh, as we grow in capability that we also grow in temptation. So I want your opinion. You said the rise of the feminine. Yes, ma'am. What does that mean to you? Well, so, you know, as we, as we uh, evolve, we find ourselves to be balanced beings. We may have had you know, an imbalance. Um, and then if you look at that and extrapolate that out to the society and the planet as a whole, you can see that we have some imbalances in terms of gender polarity. Um, and so, and as we enlighten, of course, we become balanced and the planet could become balanced. So we talk about the planet now. Um, having suppressed the feminine for whatever reason, um, in my opinion, that, that may have happened, to, to fix all the problems that we have, we rise the feminine. And how does that incorporate the rise of Gaia or the earth? Well, just because Gaia is a, a, a feminine being. Because right. um, those feminine traits are going to be harmonic, you know, with, with nature, with the planet. They're going to have in intuition and wisdom and able to, you know, be harmonic as opposed to, 
you know, all of our science and scaffolding that we build, it's also fantastic, but it isn't harmonic. Right. And you can see those structures in our society everywhere. In fact, everything's pretty much based off of oil, oil, money, power. So everything's made of it too. I mean, everything. And, and us too, we're starting to be made of it too. Right. So what, do you, what, is, what is your belief on how to integrate this? I was going to get that from you, actually. <laughs> get that from me. The yes, rise of, I think we need to be more nature beings and nurture more. Absolutely. Absolutely. I don't, uh, like, I think our connection to the earth itself has diminished. And we've forgotten that the earth plane has its own healing grid that we've actually walked away from. <laughs> but then we wait till chaos has erupted and then we want a little pill to fix whatever it is that's going on and we don't understand that there's the energetic cause whether it's in nature water mineral stone whatever a whole nother dimension that we've suppressed and then actually you have to revisit it to go back and heal it and most people don't want to go back and heal the wound or the pain that creates this suffering and that's actually when we surrender, it heals itself from a whole nother dimension, usually. Perfect. <laughs> That's what you said. On it. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I agree. Absolutely. So, so what is it you do now? Do you still do criminal psychology kind of a thing? Or are you moving into <laughs> an online corridor for realigning humanity um you know uh, thank you i um i have a lot of courses and i've done a lot of teaching but i found the environment is not conducive for a teacher like me and i also have kind of a marine corps uh, tactic which is instruction and it comes across it can be it can seem you know condescending uh rough uh and so people are already traumatized and already don't want to deal with the fear and suffering definitely don't want a marine barking at them uh, so it hasn't been popular. <laughs> um, so, um, and there's other two wonderful teachers in the world. So um, I, and I, and I knew that right along, even when I went in for the, you know, the college teaching uh, degree, but um, is that I would do the back end and maybe the support items for that. But, you know, a whole new version of learning can and is coming in and that you know frees us up to use both sides of our brain and our heart at the same time and our full consciousness and our genuine self and these you know our systems don't support that they support otherwise um, for one reason or another so how do you is there a way you feel that you could shift that to where it doesn't seem like you're doing so much of like a barking kind of marine order to like a heart centric more <laughs> And it just went, no, tell her no. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. I don't believe that. Um, you know, and this is another thing, too, is that, um, you know, there's a sense in all of us to keep the strength. And we need a stronger feminine uh, to be able to, you know, to be able to deal with a lot of the stuff we need to be able to deal with. In other words, our, our view is that a man is strong when that's not, you know, you know, strength comes from the masculine or something, which just isn't true, but it's in our language, it's in our numbers, it's in our society, it's in our pay scales. And so when we shift into truth, we shift into the feminine, it's uneasy. It's especially if you, you know, if you're macho, you know, so, um, and of course, and then we also don't want to deal with the pain. So, so it makes it, you know, it makes a challenge. So I, and I just have decided that, you see, I have a different view of everything because of what I see. I won't say I was born with x-ray vision, but I do. I see evil just as plain as day, like anybody else, you know, would see anything else. And so I happen to know things or see things that others don't uh, as far as the condition of our, of our population. But let's be optimistic. Oh, absolutely. So you sound like you feel uncomfortable in your skin a little bit, just seeing the darkness, like, because I've gone through times where darkness always comes and I have a conversation with it more so, but I always want to know why it's showing up. And for that person, like, what is their lesson? How can I move them through it? What's it for? And it doesn't always work. Sometimes people have to have 
you know, that reality that someone's going to smack them upside, a little deviant force from another dimension. Yeah, well, um, so, you know, there's, I've been through a whole evolutionary phase and continue to evolve as to, way, as to the way that I interact with darkness and separating darkness with shadow, shadow from evil. Um, <clears throat> but regardless, you know, we, you know, it's important, even as a boxer, we know that we have to stay, we can't be mad when we fight. And, <clears throat> but, you know, taking that another step is when we're in a frustration or a lower, you know, destructive emotion, we lower our vibration, which is opposite to what we're trying to do. So when we encounter, when I encounter dark, you know, it's, <clears throat> it can be a sword and armor. It looks like a contest, but really I'm trying to release the creature that's hurting the, the, the being. You know, so uh, it isn't really an act of violence. Uh, it's actually an act of freedom. And so we don't have to become, because we don't want to do violence, even though we're, you know, some of us are quite well trained in it and have a lot of experience in it. It, it isn't what we want to do as beings. And, <clears throat> but we are capable of and will. Um, um, but, you know, so, but by the time we do a whole bunch of that, we're dark. So, you know, this is the thing when the angels, you know, fall, how far do they fall? And, you know, when do you stop? It's kind of like a bungee cord, hopefully. Uh, I don't know if you saw that movie, The Wall of Great Wall of China, where they were jumping over and fighting the monsters down below. Oh, yeah. Oh, there's another one. <laughs> so it's, okay, so this is my call on that. It's, it's the frequency you frequent. So, you know, I call them the swarthy ones. But I just have, you know, I have to elevate my frequency and my vibration to stay above their circle of chaos, basically. To actually shift and transform them, it sounds like sometimes you drop below the veil with these swarthy little guys. I do, you know, and so far so good. Um, I got my rope and, um, you know, uh, somebody has to tangle at that level. You know, um, and I happen to have a lot of experience in that. Uh, and I seem to be able to come back every time and heal. I get so. that. So, um, sounds like that's kind of why you went into the criminal aspect of things, to see the dark side of this unseen, intangible dimension that most people don't want to talk about in the other world. Yeah, and we, we you know, for my, my joy is justice. I like harmony. I like peace. And when I, when I go around, I'm not asleep. I don't see it. I do see it. Okay, it's there. But I see something else as well. And I go, well, I have the present capability to alter that. So, so what am I going to do? So you said in your sleep. So do most of these dark energies come to you when you're asleep or during the day, like through your backdrop there? You know, when I was first coming into this, I was trying to get into my dreams and wasn't having lucid dreams, etc. Um, and when I finally worked to get, to get a peek in, my, one of my first peeks was a version of me, and I was like a Robin Hood, and I was just backing up, going like this, shooting light. And, he, and I looked over at myself and pulled the screen down. <laughs> so the John, this John, wasn't supposed to see that yet, apparently, or was. Um, but I, uh, I entered the dream state. In my regular consciousness, I can see with my third eye, with my regular eyes open. So um, I don't have to wait for, you know, to go to bed to, to tangle. So you have waking states of vision as well. Absolutely. Continuously. Yeah. I've, I've got at least a fourth all the time. You know, I've got to work a little bit to keep, get the fifth and other dimensions. So which eye does it come through? You know, that's a good question. Can you tell? Mine always comes through the left eye. Ah. The left to my third. My right eye is usually a, anything that comes through the right is questionable. I see. Huh. Now you're going to think about it. <laughs> well, I've had laser in both eyes. So I have laser for, in the physical, I have laser for far in one eye and laser for close in the other. And what they did, the brain adjusts after about a month. And I, now I have both in both. So I would say that's about where that, Kind of worked that out too. In fact, the laser surgery was good training. There you go. To be able to see multidimensionally at the same time. Uh huh. So, how long have you known that you've had this gift? Um. Well, you know, I 
I've always been different. So, um, you know, I could always feel what people are feeling, know what they're knowing. You know, I try not to. Um, I'm also aware of, you know, that can be very invasive, you know. So, um, and it's something that I tried to turn off a few times. I had a big drinking career uh, oh. behind that as well. <laughs> A big drinking career. Oh, yeah. Awesome. I was a bartender and tossing the glasses behind my back, staying up all night and everything. Quite a few years. Organized chaos, huh? Yes. Yes. Organized. Yes. Indeed. That's what I call that. Organized chaos, especially alcohol. It's That's really not been that good to me. So. Um, it's not your friend. Not really. No. So is there anything else you <laughs> want to share with my guests on my coffee show? Something else? Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, it's just that we have these wonderful uh, examples. You know, I'm a knight, a knight's templar. And I'm also, I was the exemplar, which means I would show the sword stroke to the rest of the uh, 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 knight. Um, and, and so I, I recognize that kind of exemplary leadership is available today, like, like that you display, ma'am. Um, and that Miss Dale displays. You have, you know, you have so many great teachers out right now. And I would just, <clears throat> it's not me, you know, uh, I, I would probably detract from the learning experience in some way, but you ladies and the great teachers that are out right now um, <clears throat> are just a tremendous uh, uh, opportunity for everyone. And uh, I just hope everyone takes advantage. It's just to your benefit. You know, that's what we're doing now. So you feel like you're the knight of the round table for the feminine of this intervention of uh, intuition and psychic information? Well, yeah, it's me and the rest of the night. You see them? <laughs> <laughs> what I do is I, I multiply myself for backup. Yep, I get that. Okay. I have a legion. I see my legion all the time. I see them too as well, man. <laughs> Few of okay. familiar looking. I know, they're kind of crazy. Even they appear small, they're quite large. Okay, there's, that's it? That's all you want to share with my crew? I think so. Okay. So once again, thanks for joining me for Meet Me for Coffee. If you are looking for John, I will have information for him and how to get a hold of him in the show notes for any of you that need your own personal night. And Ashe, thanks for joining me. Thank you, ma'am.